Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Big P here, the voice of hardcore boxing. To jo today, I'm joined by Rico, who's in Finland. How are you doing, Rico? Yeah, good, thank you. Managed to escape uh, Boris's clutches on Sunday. Tier on four, were you in, Rico? <laughs> Pardon? Were you in yeah, tier four? I was. I was in tier four. Yeah, so managed to escape. So you're in tier four, but yeah, you managed to get out of London. I don't think anybody's stopping you. And also, I had flight, so it's not like the government's going to refund me and the flight was going, so why not? Why would government have had to refund you, Rico? Well, they wouldn't have refunded me because I would have sort of voluntarily cancelled my flight, so just not turned up, isn't it? Mm. It's not like the government told the airlines on Saturday that you need to start refunding flights, so... I think they started cancelling them on Monday, so I managed to get here on Sunday. I had flights anyways on Sunday. Oh, you've done well then, haven't you, to get to escape? Is it cold there, Rico? Because I mean, it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a minus few degrees, and it's also about snow outside, so, yeah, it's good. Proper winter weather. When you used to go to school, Rico, did you wear them big puffer coats? Yeah, of course. Did you? Is chuck that what they all wear on your way? Yeah, yeah, chuck a few snowballs at people in the playground, all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant uh, you want to hand out some porky awards don't we for year Rico we do we do hardcore badges for fighters go on they've then made, they, or, or, or uh, porky mugs porky mugs yeah go on then <laughs> uh, what, what, what are we going for what list have you got uh, I have let me just dig it up um all right, fight of the year. We can start with that. So, who's your fight of the year? Fighter of the year would have to be Tia Fomo Lopez. For Same me. here. Same here. He he went over and he beat um you know he beat Lomachenko that not many people thought that could be beaten. Yeah. You know, he's relatively inexperienced for a guy of his age and you know stature. Took a big risk and he paid off. He not only beat him, he beat him comfortably, did he? He did. I mean, it, it's one of those fights that we don't need to see a rematch because it was so comprehensive. Yeah. But what do you make of Lomachenko now coming out and saying that, you know, if the refs were bribed and it was unfair and so forth? Bad loser. Yeah. Bad loser, I think. I think he bit off more than he can chew fighting at that weight. Yeah, agreed. That's what I think. And also age caught up for him a bit because he hasn't really looked the same for the last few years. I mean, Luke Campbell gave him a... I mean, Luke Campbell lost comprehensively, but he did give him a good fight. I was there, so... Yeah. You know, it was a tough fight. And you don't think Lomachenko three, four years ago would have would have handled the doubt of Luke Campbell. I think Lomachenko was basically a super featherweight who could have remained unbeaten all his career if he'd have been at that weight from the beginning, couldn't he? Yeah, but it's all about money, isn't it? Because he turned pro quite late, so yeah. you don't get those big fights. And he also cleaned up that division by beating the likes of Walters and everybody else. Yeah, Nicholas Walters. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so he, he's my uh, fight, fighter of the year across the board. But uh, what what's the next one? Trainer of the year. Trainer of the year. I'm going to go for reno Ede reno so is it canelo's trainer yes. mainly for consistency and he, they've been doing it year in year out haven't they really yeah you got one I, defeat I mean, is it 57 fights or something something like that, about that isn't it Different. yeah it's a it's a tough um yeah it's a tough uh year to give train off the year because not many trainers have fought um uh, not many trainers have, you know, had lots of fighters fighting. So you basically get trainers with one or two big wins. But I'm going to go for uh, Derek James from Dallas because, you know, he fought with um, Jamel, Jamel Charlo, beat Rosario to unify the titles and then also uh, Spence beat Danny Garcia. So, you know, yeah. he's done good work. For the, he he was close on my list. He was close on my list. But I just feel that... Maybe because that fight's fresh in his minds. He's just he's just beat the Ring Magazine champion and WBA champion Annie Callum Smith. But he's he's done it. He's been doing it for years, Annie now, and he's still only just turned. Is he twenty nine, thirty or something? Yeah, thirty. Well, thirty is he, uh, Canelo. So I just feel that consistency 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I understand where you're coming from with Derek James. I think he's done really well. I mean, Errol Spence come back from a car crash, didn't he? And mm-hmm. fought, fought amazingly. But people kept saying to me, do you think you'll be the same person and all that porky? I said, what do you mean? He won't be the same person. I said, look, he's just got through a, th- a three-month camp on here. They've had all the best sparring that he can get. So if he can get through all that, they'll know if he's right to get it ring, won't they? Yeah, but we have seen guys like uh, David Hay getting through camps and being quicker, faster, stronger <coughs> stronger than a speeding bullet, and yet he's... Uh, on fight night, he hasn't really turned up. So yeah, but David Day is one of them people that is gonna. He's a whore, and he'll whore himself out for money and tell the fans anything. He'll do send some Instagram videos on his channel, saying, "Look at me doing all these twists. My ankles stronger than ever. I'm quicker than ever. I'm more explosive and all that." And that's the whip up a frenzy. And they did that twice to us with Bellew. And. With Bellew fights, and I didn't agree with that, but I don't believe anything David A says. David A is the type of guy to turn up at the in a limousine at the arena with the champion and then leave in the limousine if his guy gets beat with a new champion. He's another donking Eddie Earn. These people have no scruples, do you know what I mean? So that's, that's just yeah. my opinion, isn't it? But we do see often fighters sort of inflate how well the training camp has gone and then when they've lost their some sort of problem whether that's a shoulder injury or niggling injury like Lomachenko was saying about his shoulder or niggling injuries or anything else so you see a lot of that where fighters effectively yeah just saying whatever to sell the fight because yeah they know it could be a cash out so yeah I think Spence coming back is, is actually quite remarkable given the injury and how recent it was Think about Kel Brook when he he was out of the ring for eighteen months, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right then. So yeah. we've we've got Eddie Reynoso. I've gone for Reynoso, Nace, whatever it's called, and you've gone for uh, Derek, Derek James. James. You like Derek James because we were going to stick it on Dominic Ingle, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, and I met him in Dallas, and he's a good guy. Dominic, um, we all know what happened, don't we? <laughs> Apple crumble. <laughs> uh, what about prospect of the year for you prospect Paul? of the year for me it's that Nick Sullivan he's from Norfolk Virginia he's a lightweight he's fight, and he's from the same area as Pernell Whitaker the great 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 sweet pea Pernell Whitaker yeah. rest in peace rest in peace and I just think that there's a lot of hype about around this kid and he's one to watch for, for me from America Nick Sullivan so I'm going to go for Jerome Boo Tennis. I know he had a no contest, um, was it last weekend, against Chris Von Helden with the head, you know, head clashes by his fourth three times this year. And he just looks like a really good fighter. He's tal- he punches hard. He's a very good boxer. He's in the welterweight division. I think next year he'll probably end up making waves. And I don't think he's signed what any of the major promoters, but he must be like 18 and 0 or something. But yeah, Jerome Ennis is a hell of a fighter, and big fan of his. Uh, and what about fight of the year? Is that the last one? Yeah. Well, we, well we'll go for British fighter of the year. I mean, oh, British uh, fighter of the year. Yeah, British oh, fighter of the year next. Uh, Joe Joyce for me. Yeah. Yeah, Joe Joyce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Joyce. Yeah. I'll I'll probably have to go for Tyson Fury just because of him beating Wild. And I was thinking about this that. It's been quite a poor year for British fighters in general. I mean, we've had White knocked out, um, you know, Callum Smith losing last weekend. So we don't have many highlights of British fighters at world level. So that's the only one I can think about where British fighters taken a sizable challenge where people thought they could lose and actually win. So that was early on in the year before the pandemic, really. But yeah, I think that's uh, my fight of the year. All right. Uh, British trainer of the year. British trainer of the year, Pat Barrett. Same here. Have you got Pat Barrett? Yeah. Yeah, I do. He's gone under the radar, on him really, Pat Barrett, because he's not hanging out at back of IFL. But have you noticed how <laughs> they're on edge around him, aren't they? You know, <laughs> yeah. IFL lot. So he doesn't get many interviews because everybody's terrified to go to his gym. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In case how it happens, but uh, if Pat Barrett told you to run up a hill, I'm sure you'd be running up 
full speed. Oh <laughs> you don't cock corners with Pat Barrett. Yeah. Uh, no. British prospect of the year. Can we just touch on Pat Barrett again. Pat yeah. Barrett well, learned off Brian Hughes, didn't he? He did. Train Robin Reed, Michael Jennings, Scott Quigg. So he, he's from, he's, he's steeped in it, isn't he? But like I've just said there, I don't think he gets enough credit uh, for what he's done. And so, you know, he's... And also, hey? and also, if you think about Pat Barrett, the guys he has, so Lyndon Arthur, Telfer Barrett, they're all very good boxers. So, yeah, you know, they wild school boxers. He's not just power punchers. Well, Pat were a power puncher, wasn't he? When, when, when he, yeah. he thought he was a big KO artist, wasn't he? Uh, and I suppose you could say Robin Reed were it for, for certain parts of his career. I mean, he, Robin went over to Italy, didn't he? Pat Barrett in corner, Brian Hughes, and he ripped the belt off Nard Yellow, didn't he? Yeah. When he won it, Robin, in 96. So we have to we have to give Pat Barrett credit. He doesn't get a lot of credit. But like I've just said, he's not hanging out at back of IFL and they don't seem to be keen to go visit him as much as they do at other gyms, do they? So maybe they wish people should start giving him a bit yeah. of kudos, but he's my trainer at year for UK. Uh, what else? What what do you say? Prospect? Yeah, British prospect of the year. Dennis McCann. For me. Yeah, I, was, I, I was thinking about that, but I went for Denzel Bentley because he won at a higher level and he had a couple of really good fights. And also I think that was the British fight of the year. Uh, Heffron Bentley won, but you know, I think Bentley just his improvements in the second fight, and yeah, he sort of come out of uh, the woodworks. Although he's Terry's good mate, and I know he's been on Terry's podcast before, the beautiful boxing podcast. And yeah, I was very impressed with him against Mark Heffron, who's a good fighter. Yeah, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what else were there? Let's go for KO of the year. Let's, that's the final one. I've got Tan uh, Davis against Santa Cruz. I'm going to go for Povetkin against the Can'ts man. Anybody who wants it can't get it. Tillian I mean, White getting iced. I mean, that was the most, that was the most sort of joyous KO of the year. But it just uh, does him right, doesn't it? What, what, I don't agree with what, what a lot of things that he's done and how he conducts himself. So, and I was looking through some of his compilation, you know, who has been critical of people and swore and said vile things like you if you was a crackhead and Tony Bell, you suck a dick and all this blah, blah, blah. And Dillian White can dish it out. But when the boot's on the other foot, he don't like it, does he? No, and it seems like they swore in Povetkin now and not going to fight him anymore. They don't want to fight Povetkin because if he loses against Povetkin again, he'd never get another pay-per-view in England ever again. Do we rather fight somebody, get a pay-per-view, and somebody he knows he can win? He might be a 60-40 favourite in Povetkin, in fact. Was that 40% chance that Dylan White gets dusted again? Do you know I think he I mean? might fight against Chisora again. Who would want to see that, though? Who would want to see that? Casuals. Casuals, yeah. Nobody wants to see that. And I, why would Derek Chisora deserve a third pay-per-view? Why? Why does he deserve a third pay-per-view, Derek? You know, Frotch only had three pay-per-views with Sky. Why does Derek deserve a pay-per-view? Ten losses, shot to pieces, held together by masking tape by the haymaker. You whore. So, so why would we want to see Derek Chisora in a, in, a, in a trilogy? I wouldn't, but I think that's probably that's probably uh, what they're going to sell it. That Chisora had a close fight with you, so he can eat a good. No, weren't close though, was it? No, it wasn't close. He got beat up most rounds. And look at except, that. Process. Except for Caldwell and uh, Belly it was a close fight, and she's already won that fight. Whores. If you're watching Caldwell, you're a whore. Belly, you're a whore. Hey, whore. Whores, mate. A lot of them. Yeah, well, Belly is very strict on uh, boxers taking drugs, as uh, your last intro showed. Tony Bellew, the man that says all people who fail dope tests should be stoned, but if it's a mate of his, they don't say a word, do they? No. It's all in their character, but it's in every other boxer's character except for matchroom fighters' characters. Yeah. And how many days has it, Dillian White, since your B-sample went missing? Is it five, six hundred days now? We're still waiting? Yeah. We're still waiting for this mystery B-sample, aren't we? No, no word from Tony on that. Hey, evening, Tony. 
You didn't, uh, under your Christmas tree, there wasn't a missing B sample because that would have been a perfect gift for you. The oh, it would have been. I'd have had it on here, wouldn't I? I'd put it on <laughs> but uh, what else were the Rico? Is that it for awards? Yeah, that's it. The uh, pork, everybody gets a porky mug for that. Come and collect it from uh, <laughs> the porky back cave from, from, from Porky HQ. <laughs> porky HQ, pig pen. <laughs> uh, on a sad note, I want to touch on Frankie Randall's death. They, just yes. a few hours before Christmas Eve when he died, didn't he, Frankie Randall? Yeah. Man that beat Chavez. The man that beat Chavez. And 14 weeks later, he had to fight him again. Chavez got a cut in his forehead and they went to cards, didn't they? And they gave it to uh, Chavez, didn't they, on a technical decision. Chavez couldn't do not with him. Somebody always meets a bogeyman, don't they, in a career. Ali's were Ken Norton, won it, and Chavez yeah. were Frankie Randall. They did fight a third time, but it were for no belt years and years later, wasn't it, at the end of the careers. But, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, at that time, Chavez was pound for pound number one, and he must have had, what was it, something like 60 wins? It was something like 60 and 0 before he... Uh, well, 90 and I thought it was... Maybe 90, yeah, 90 and 0. Or 90 won. fights, were it 88 and 2 or something like that? I forget now. Yeah. I'm sure it was a 90 fight winning streak, but didn't... Uh, Anti had a draw against Pernell Whitaker, and and a loss against Frankie Randall before he fought Meldrick Taylor. I'm yeah, not that sure. was a hell of a fight. That Meldrick, Meldrick Taylor, Taylor fight. Well, that were a, a bad stoppage by Richard Steele. I think the guy were on his feet two seconds to go and he stood up, and I thought that were in bad taste. It was. Uh, I may have that wrong, but I think I think uh, they rematched and he beat. He stopped Taylor, didn't he? Really much. But getting on for yeah, but Taylor was never the same fighter. He was pissing blood uh, after the first fight, and he took such a beating. There's a good documentary if people want to watch over Christmas time. It's on YouTube, HBO's. Uh, I think it's Greatest Nights, and there's one on the Taylor Chavez fight, and that's worth watching. It's really good. Can I just give a plug to my good friend Crawford Ashley? He's uh, all you yes. are out there. I think you all need to go and watch Crawford Ashley's YouTube channel. He's done 140 videos so far and he's hardly getting any views, probably because knowing Crawford, he's probably not even putting tags in on his videos and stuff like that. But what he says regarding fighters who can't get the basics right and the winning wheel title fights, and what he said in a lot of his videos is what we've been banging on about for years now. Uh, so... If you're hardcore and you tell me you are, go su su subscribe to Crawford Ashley, the spiritual boxer, YouTube. Go watch some of his stuff and you think I'm hardcore. This guy here, British Commonwealth European champion, fought two times, I think, for world titles, but he'll say three, but I think it's two, uh, against Michael Nunn and Virgil Lilly. were robbed in the Virgil Lilly one. Uh, on points on a Don King show and he were outclassed by Michael Nunn, which he admits because he's a pretty honest guy. But I think people need to go follow Crawford Ashley, the spiritual boxer. Just go look, look at some of the stuff that he's doing at Bethlehem Boxing Club in Leeds. And he's doing it for free. And he's, I like him because he's anti-establishment. I mean, you saw the interview I did with him where he said if he'd have had a yeah. gun, he'd have shot Frank Warren, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's been through the system. If people need any advice about boxing training or or just getting the fundamentals right, go see him. Or if you want to be a boxer, he do, he's doing private uh, sessions at Bethlehem Boxing Club. Or you want to know anything about boxing or you need some advice, get in touch with him. There's also a email address if you go onto his videos. It pops up in videos. I think it's the chilling 9 at gmail.com or something, but don't quote me on that. It's something like that. But get in touch with him and follow this guy because I follow him, Ultra Tech, you, Terry, Asylum. And there isn't many more that I listen to. There isn't many more. Martins, is it Andy? I listen to them, but they don't do many, do they? No. I'm not saying you have to go on the establishment, but people need to go watch some of Crawford's stuff and his videos. And he just talk, he puts it in layman terms, doesn't he? Just, why have we got people fighting in world title fights who can't take somebody's jab off them? What, what, what's being taught in these gyms? 
Yeah. So, but go on. Go Maybe on. you can put a link at the bottom of the video um, to the channel. Uh, well, tech guys are off now till next till next year, so I'll do. I won't. I won't know how to do it. But what, what I'll do, I'll put a, I'll pin a comment up with his detail. Yeah. I'll pin a comment up after the video. I'm gonna put this out today. About tea time, this Boxing Day will go out. But uh, but people need to follow him and go watch his videos. Crawford Ashley, tell him Big P sent you, Big Porky sent you. Crawford Ashley, the spiritual boxer. I think he's only got about 200 subscribers, which is and you got, and then you've got other people that are hanging out the back of people with thousands. It's all messed up, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. But we keep fighting the good fight. Well, all right, then moving on, Rico. Uh, we've we've covered Frankie de- Frankie Randall's deaths. May he rest it. May he rest in peace. Uh, let's have a look. Eddie and the Zone. Sky big changes. I've been told. Bean ended up working on darts. We know that Bean tried to get a job with Sasanta ten years ago when Dennis were riding high there with loads of dates. Um, the Zone as well. He tried to get a job with the Zone. The zone as well. Uh, Bean, I said, if there's any ripples at Sky, did I say months ago, Bean will jump ship? I did a video, didn't I, call in These will jump ship. Nelson, Bean, all the rest of them, they'll all be out for themselves. I mean, would you put it past all that lot trying to get on at the zone and sending the CVs to the zone? No, you wouldn't, would you? Because it's now at Sky, every man for himself. So get ready. Eddie's sent shockwaves through boxing with this Dazone thing, hasn't it? And have you noticed yeah, I mean, all these same people, the Sky Rimmers, I call them, they all seem to be doing more interviews than ever and ever now, don't they? Putting the best yeah. sweaters on, getting their, their heads shaved and all the makeup on and all that, and all coming out with company man answers and all that. They're all auditioning, aren't they, on IFL boxing mm-hmm. social behind the gloves. They're all auditioning. To get to where the gravy train's going to be, and that's the zone now, isn't it? Do you think? What do you? What's yeah. your on that, Rico? Yeah, I agree. I mean, look, uh, <laughs> yeah. I yeah, I agree. Uh, the Callum Smith Canelo fight wasn't the zone, and I think it did quite good numbers. And you know, the price point was good for people to actually pay for it rather than stream it. Um, so I think they realised the Sky might be cutting its boxing budget because if the pay-per-views aren't doing numbers like they used to, and there's also not enough fighters to put pay-per-views on. If you think about it, Sky Stable, put Joshua pay-per-view on. Who else is a pay-per-view fighter? You could say probably Callum Smith in the right fight, but who else do they have that can headline these pay-per-views? So Sky are going to cut their boxing budget for next year. So that just means less shows. Um, also just less big night so going on to the zone being a UK you know doing a lot of the UK coverage Sky and Matchroom deal is going to come up next year right so it's probably a good time to audition for roles at the zone and other broadcasters and see what happens so I wouldn't be surprised if Bean went to another part of Sky and then some of these other guys like Johnny Nelson are trying to push to go into the zone because they can say everybody knows me from Sky and I'm like then you know, everybody knows me in UK boxing media, so I can kind of promote the zone. Yeah, but everybody's sick of Johnny Nelson, aren't they? This is where it's all going to come back to bite him in arse. I mean, do you think these people at the zone don't know about what's been going on at Sky? It's a very little cult club. And it looks to me like how the work it is, if anybody speaks out, like Paulie Malignaggi and Carl Froch, they're, they're sort of punished, aren't they? Nobody's allowed to say anything that's even the tiny, tiniest bit critical about Big Dos of Femi, are they? Nope. Nope. And, and also, the what's going to be interesting is when somebody does jump ship, um, what's going to be their narrative around pay-per-views? So... How are they going to talk about pay-per-views? Because these same people have been drumming off pay-per-views for years and telling us that don't buy it if it's not, you know, if you don't want to, or it's a price of a takeaway and a night out and all the same thing. When they end up going to the zone, that's going to be interesting because actually they're going to have to take a different line. I think that's something that Eddie's really been struggling with, um, having this message in the UK, in the US about pay-per-views being 
very expensive, but then in the UK saying that's the model and if the zone comes here, it's going to be, you know, where's Eddie going to say? Because some of his fighters will be fighting under zone. So what's he going to say about this price point versus his 25 or 20 quid pay-per-views? Yeah, I mean, what happened to Eddie saying pay-per-view we're dead and now the zone we're doing pay-per-view, aren't they? Yeah, but you know what? It, ma- it always made sense for the zone to do pay-per-views for big events. It yeah. always made sense. And you have to remember, not everybody's, um, you know, technologically advanced enough that they know exactly how to do, you know, stream stuff. Some people want to buy it as a one-off from their tellies. Not everybody's a technological wizard like you, Porky. <laughs> Jesus. So, do you see Dazone surviving then, and Sky not? Well, I see Dazone surviving in a certain in a certain sort of scenario where they take over UK boxing and have a fairly limited content offering. But that probably means that they won't survive in the US. So I can imagine they're going to pull out of the US. Oh, Sky? Uh, no. Oh, Dazone. Dazone, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's that's the expensive part, hasn't it? Whereas in the UK, they put, if they can get matchroom fighters on, World Boxing Super Series, a few cards from Sauerland and others, a few international cards that have been going to Premier Sports, then you have like a Box Nation type product. And then in a few years' time, if they can tag along some football and other sports at a reasonable price point, it's a viable product. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with you, mate. I, I just uh, where does this leave Eddie Earn? Then I mean, is he is he going to feel awful about bringing these these to the party and uh, and that kind of thing? Do you think? As my mate Russell would say, accountant by name, accountant by nature. So I don't think he'll feel awful at all. If that makes business sense, he'll just jump ship with his own, and then he'll start drumming that as the biggest platform and saying that you know, terrestrial or sort of digital TV is dead and there's no point in paying £50 subscription fees. You can just get the zone a lot cheaper and no pay-per-views and everything else. So we'll see a big sea change in what Eddie's actually saying. See a big what? Like a change in what Eddie's going to be saying about Sky if he leaves them for the zone. And I think depending on what money's on offer uh, at the zone with the new contract versus what Sky are wanting to offer a number of dates. And that's the thing. Because remember, Sky have to offer a certain amount of dates because it's sort of a traditional TV model where, where you know, they have to clear the schedule and they can't compete with football. Whereas the zone's a digital, sort of a digital platform, which means that they don't have live content in the same sense that they don't have a fixed schedule. So they can just, put dates on as many as Eddie wants and as many shows as Eddie wants, so it's more flexible. Where's it, how's it going to affect the darts and all that? Do you think that'll still stay with Sky and that? Yeah, I mean, look, that's that's a lucrative part of what Sky offers. And also the money in darts, the zone is international. So if they buy the rights for matchroom fights uh, internationally, they can broadcast it around the world, where something like darts, that's a bit different. Maybe snooker. I know snooker's watched in a number of countries, so but they all have different deals. So it's not like Matchroom has the same deal for darts and snookers, boxing, that they're all in a package. So they'll do what's best. And Sky have been pretty instrumental with darts, whereas in boxing, yeah, Sky have been instrumental in the UK, but not globally. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, exciting times ahead. Hey, speaking of exciting times, Rico, we're into that baby. Passport. Sit no one, it's black. Pork is missing teeth. We'll be happy that you're going to get your teeth fixed. Yeah, well, that's it. All that, well, it, everything's in place now, isn't it? All I need now is permission to fly. Oh, but, which uh, country are you going to go to? I don't know. There's, there's a, they're trying to work me one out so I get a. Bit of a big discount if we stick the logo on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm like? I'm a cheeky cunt, aren't I? Yeah, why not? Why not? I don't want to be paying. I mean, what worries me about is going to other country, another country, in it, and not being able to fucking get out there, and then something happening, and my head going, and then I'm being, when I'm in some dungeon or something like. I had a mate who got 
caught in Thailand with someone and he was like, they're ages. <laughs> I have visions of that, but well, it's took long enough to come on it, passport. But oh, that's good news. Yeah, it's good news. It means I'm kind of like legit because at first they were, I couldn't even get a birth certificate, I couldn't find it. And I tried to get a, re, a copy of it, and they went, No, we've never heard of you. So I said, What are you on about? You never heard of me. Did you say you're Big P? Yeah, I said, they, should have, they should have known Big P, the voice of hardcore you boxing. Pastor, you, what do you mean? She said, It's 11 <laughs> quid, but we can't find uh, proof of you being born. And anyway, obviously, after so, all the messing about for back and forward, I got it, and that went delay basically. So, but it's all systems go now. But you know, I don't like flying anyway, don't you, Rico? Yeah, what about Dennis's wedding? How are we going to fly there? Well, I got arrested, then I getting up plane. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I spilled but... a drink, then I on my passport, and it had faded. But what they did, security there. I mean, I had Dennis on phone. I said, Dennis, are not letting him out, letting me on plane. Dennis went, just fucking tell him it's Dennis Thompson's wedding. Put him on phone to me. And <laughs> I put Dennis on phone. They're like, you know what, Dennis is. Dennis had had a drink, and you know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> But no, and anyway, it ended up a bit of pushing and shoving and I said, get, me, get you off me and blah, blah, blah. They just come and security, you've never seen that like it at airports. This is at East Med. So they ended up detaining me for 45 minutes and then escorted me to my car and then got me out of, out of area and that was that. And so Big P wasn't allowed to go, but we wish him well. But no, I've got my passport now. It's only it's took long enough, hasn't it? Yeah. But uh, getting back to boxing, so Eddie's got some brass neck on him, though, hasn't he, now, doing this with the zone, hasn't he? The brass neck on them is... He's relentless. Oh, well, I don't... You know, relentless, to me, is somebody who's uh, who's had adversity in their life. Eddie's had no adversity. We all remember what happened when Carl Frampton left him. That, that was his first sort of kicking nuts, one it, in boxing. Mm-hmm. And it took him a while to get over that. So what happened to Mr. Relentless then? Sorry, when you're having everything handed, you're on a plate, Rico, isn't it? Which is what Eddie's had, hasn't he? He's had it on a plate for him, right? Yeah, he has. He yeah. projects himself into these scenarios where it's it's me, Golden Boy, and Aram now. He were doing that before he were even in top five of promoters, and he keeps projecting himself and projecting himself. And eventually, if you keep repeating stuff, eventually people think you're best. That's like Michael Caine and Danny Dyer. They were in that many films for years. Everybody thought they were all good actors at the end, but they were just just producing crap, aren't, aren't they, basically? Michael yeah. came off for years and so is Danny Dyer, but eventually you say, oh, that's that film star, don't you? It grows on you. A bit like Tyson Fury, isn't it? I know he's heavyweight champ at will, but they keep pushing this mental health narrative, don't they, at all the time, and it's repeat, repeat, revenge, repeat, 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 isn't it now? I'm bored I mean, of it now, Rico, are you? Yeah, I mean, the mental health stuff, it was quite convenient that we actually forget what he was why he couldn't fight for two years and yeah, exactly. That wasn't that wasn't to do with mental health, so no. And it's it's just it's just become a bit but it's just become a bit boring now. And I don't I don't want to see it on Jonathan Ross. And um, it's the re- repeating same old stuff from five years ago now, isn't it? It's five years since he fought Vladimir, isn't it? Five year and one five month. Five years, time flies. And I, I don't I don't want to I want to see some fighting. I don't want to yeah. see. And, and I don't, I don't want to hear about all this Joshua stuff because it's not going to happen next year. No, I don't want to hear it. Do you know no. what I mean? But you know, you know what day it is today. I think Terry posted on his uh, Twitter. Day, it? You know what day Boxing Day is? It's the day when every boxer posts that they're out doing a run. I already saw Shannon Courtney showing that she's doing a run because they want to show how hard they work it, and you know. Boxing day that they no days off at all. This Christmas is yesterday, but I'm out doing a run. Listen, if they're doing it, good luck to them. But you know what? You know, when you cry wolf that many times and you play the social media game like they do, as soon as you get found out anything else, as soon as they get found out with anything that's not true, anything else that I see, then I don't believe it. How can you believe them? Because if it were a court of law, they wouldn't be believed. People, that's how people get off with certain things in court, because somebody's perjured themselves. So forever say Tyson Fury. We know what, what things he's done in the past, don't we? Oh, he says I can't believe. People say you're being no. nobody's saying he can't fight. But anything they say in the PR game, I don't believe it. So when he's saying they're gonna fight Joshua and it's it's a done deal, 
and it's all signed up and all this and everything's agreed and blah de blah. Well, why 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 is it why are they fighting then? Because that's what we were told, weren't we, six months ago? Five months. Yeah, wasn't um hadn't Dosha now come out and said that um his management team needs to that Eddie might have his own opinions, but my management team needs to make an offer to Fury. It's well, just well, Eddie well, well, talking. It's not like Eddie, it's not like Eddie's making the offers on behalf of Joshua. He's not his manager. It's, we're going around in circles with it. It's publicity for the sake of it. And what they're doing, what we what we now have got is certain journalists in the Sun newspaper, the Daily Mail, Telegraph, Daily Mirror, certain journalists and but will boxing news, IFL, whatever boxing so forth. There's a certain group of about 14, 13 or 14 people in the media who've got biggish platform or big platforms. They've been piled up by the boxers because these boxers and managers and promoters, they know how to play the game, don't they? It's just mm-hmm. like Donald Crump, Crump winning that election, isn't it? They played game, didn't they, to win it? He do not know fuck all yeah. politics, does he? Crump, Trump, so he's just a front man. And, and I'm sick of seeing it now. I, want, I, don't, I don't want to hear about all this... Uh, certain boxer got up this morning and went for a run or certain boxer this morning went to Costa. That's not news to me. News is press conferences where so-and-so and -and -and so-and-so are signed to fight. It's a big press conference and it is on. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see all this other shit and Jonathan Ross shit coming out with stuff because one of on Jonathan Ross 18 months ago talking about mental health. Yep. So why does he need to go on another 18 months later and talk about the same recycled shit? It's shit. And I don't do shit. I want to see the fights. You know what it's doing? It's it's masking how little boxing and how little interesting fights there are. So they just sort of dangling this carrot in front of us and saying, this is going to come, but just bear with us, bear with us. I hear about it. It, it, All this, how to lose weight and all that. uh, Like it's a miracle. Tyson's been knocking off Minimum of six stone upwards all his career. It's only recently where Penny's dropped and he's not knocking weight off, isn't it? It's, nope. so, it's not like it's anything new. Piers Morgan, I, I keep seeing Tyson on there. He needs to come on. He needs to ask him, so well, Tyson, who did you give them millions to, for charity? Yeah. Um, why don't they ask him about wild boar or cocaine and all that? No, it's mental health and weight loss. It's becoming boring. I don't want to hear it. I want to see the fights. Let's see the fights instead of shit and knackers chattered. I want to see the fights. That'll get me in box chocker, won't it? That little outburst. But I want to see fights. Same with Joshua. What is he doing? They're just manipulating press all the time. Joshua didn't want to fight Tyson Fury. He's frightened to death. He don't want to fight Usyk. He don't want to fight Wilder Usyk, Joe Joyce, all them guys there. Joshua don't want to go near. He'll want to pick up, he might drop a belt, he might want to defend his belt against easier wins. But Joshua, we've just seen what he's about. Pool left, haven't we? I wouldn't be surprised if he had a Dillian White, White rematch. Well, they want to fight for the fans, British. Wants to see that? Nobody wants to see that, but that's sort of a logical next fight. Dylan White, what has Dylan right, Listen, let me tell you something. Here, right? Dylan White, uh, Dave Allen. Babic, John Fury. What belts have they won between them and Tom Little? As, Tom as Little's met... not won a belt. Dave Allen's not won a belt. Babic's not won a belt. Dylan White's won a vacant British. John Fury's not won a belt. But all them five people, Dave Allen, Tom Little, Babic, Dylan White, John Fury, what do they all do? They all play the media game, don't they? Mm-hmm. Them five people, and like I've just said, they've got a vacant British, British between them five. Every single one of them gets more press attention than any other fighter, in my opinion. John Fury's well, not more, even fighting, is he? More press attention than guys like Beefy Smith, Beefy Smith, Natasha Jonas, Callum Smith. Dave Allen gets more attention than all them. And is this where boxing's heading? Where if you if you pile certain people up in media, or you get you know how to work social media and all that, is that where we're heading now? We're boxing because if so, I think we're heading for Skid Row. Well, I think I think it's become like a soap opera, hasn't it? Where people 
where people are just worried about the narrative and you know the views and you know what makes good clickbait and somebody says something and interviewing the same people because of views and if you remove the views and you just looked at the content as it is 90 percent of the content doesn't actually give you anything like you could just stop watching these interviews and you could just read or you could just watch the press conferences and just focus on the news and you get the same information everything else is not relevant yeah the fight is the only thing that matters yeah so uh, that, that, so basically do you think it's going to happen then fury against joshua next year no no so why have we got all this piers morgan jonathan ross and sky sports and all this hype around it when everybody in the boxing industry knows that tyson's tied up to death with legal issues with bob arum and Heyman. So why why are we hearing all this crap about it? it's on next and well it's just to keep boxing in front of the mind and keep people sort of talking about it that's the only reason also it helps Sky doesn't it because then you can build up the next fight you can build up the next show you can you know the one before Fury the one before Joshua you know that's BT as well so it's yeah. all about this isn't it because the moment the fight happens let's say it happens next year right it's uh, two fight you know, two fights. What happens to UK boxing after that? What do we want to see after that fight? Has it peaked and then it's just declined? What happens after that? I don't know. But it goes into decline, doesn't it? Yeah. Who else is there? There's Joe Joyce. That's not the youngest of fighters, but he know, could be not best much... at lot, couldn't he? Could be. I mean, I'd probably still say Tyson's the best out of the lot, but still, you know. Nobody calls Joe Joyce out, do they? Dylan White no. don't call him out, does it? Derek Chisori didn't want to fight him for 800 grand. I mean, look, credit to Sam Jones, although I don't really particularly like him, but credit to him because they have been putting the offers out. They have been calling these guys out. They've been backing. They've been doing it the right way where they're putting him tough and they've been backing their man to the hilt. And he hasn't been all about doing Joe Joyce doing interviews and talking about certain fights. They've actually tried to chase these fights down. Well, it's very and also Daniel Dubois. You know, we we can't write him off now. I mean, he's a young fighter. So. Rebuilding job, isn't it for him now, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Rebuilding job, but uh, what do you think about the media at the moment? Where if you don't do certain things or you speak to certain people, you don't get access and all that. Do you think it's being manipulated off the scale now? I, I think you answered your own question. Then it's always been like that, hasn't it? I mean, that's. That's the thing that Matchroom bought uh, sort of with Eddie Hearn that, you know, Frank Warren's old school, right? He, if he doesn't like you, he'll still give you access to his shows and he realises that there's a benefit for having people covering it objectively as possible. He might fall out with media members. But with Matchroom, it's all about, you know, using media and social media in particular sort of drivers of fights and drivers of events. And it's all this... YouTubeification of boxing, isn't it? The yeah. boxing YouTube world is becoming closer to real boxing than before, and it's all sort of converging into this one sort of entertainment type thing. It's all about, as you know from Barry Hearn and Snooker, it's all about characters, it's all about storylines, it's all about personalities. It's not about the sports, it's about entertainment. Yeah, I see what you mean, mate. I see what you mean. Yeah, it's pantomime, isn't it? Uh, moving on then. Joe Gallagher. What now for Joe Gallagher? Is he being frozen out by Sky and Eddie Hearn? Or what, what's what's happening with his stable? Because is he in a weak position, a weaker position now than he were last week? Uh, I, I think so, because I don't think Sky and him, well, Sky and Eddie and him were particularly sort of on the best of terms. So I think now that Callum Smith has lost uh, against Canelo, there's not necessarily a need for Sky to have these guys on because they feel that, you know, they feel that they can get cheaper fighters and less accomplished fighters on the platform. And also because that none of Joe Gallagher's guys are there to promote themselves or none of these guys are there interviewed countless by IFL. They 
they feel like they can get these characters like they don't do a lot of interviews joe's fighters they just i i i think that's a good thing really because no, because they focus on what the sport is they focus on training they go to the train don't they they get up do the runs they do the training they eat correctly they go to bed early they're all consummate professionals i've heard that i've heard he live look we've given joe gallagher stick over years but i've heard he lives the, the life of a trainer and he's he's non stop and he on go all the time with from from getting up to going to bed. Now that's good, and you'd have to say he's done well for them for them kids that he's managed, Danny, and trained. I think you. Well, look how many world champions he's turned. He's got them there, whether it's by hook or crook, or and got rematches when kids didn't deserve them. So he's got them set up and financially as well. Yeah, and also. You know, he's looked after his own because a lot of these managers or trainer managers, for them, it's all about making sure that they're close to Eddie Hearn and the fighters are given to them and, you know, they piled up. Whereas for him, it's all about the fighters. So you have to give credit to that. Um, you know, I've given that girl, The girl he's got, Natasha Jonas, uh, she comes across very articulate on telly. She's a, she's a nice looking lass, isn't she as well? Yeah, and you know what? She's she's got a career in media probably now, and I think she's she's a better analyst than Some Anna Woolhouse, than ten thousand times better than Anna Woolhouse. Oh my god, Anna Woolhouse shouldn't be anywhere near that place, mate. With anywhere near the boxing ring, uh, she annoys me. I'd like to see Natasha Jonas fight Terry Harper. Would you? Yeah, I think that would be a good fight. I mean, she won the first fight, clearly. So, yeah, the least she deserves a rematch. But in any case, I think that fight has got her more into the mainstream. It's also set her up for a career outside of boxing. You know, she's a single mom, um, very good amateur pedigree. Seems like a very switched on uh, young woman. And yeah, she's fought really, you know, she fought really well and Regardless of what happens, I hope they make that fight, but I don't think Terry Harper wants that fight. That's the reality. No. Well, Steffi Bull don't want it, does he? They don't want they, they want to uh, get a few more quid out of the job, which you can't blame them. But but why say you want it and then then chicken out? Well, we don't know what Terry Harper wants when Steffi Bull runs uh, her Twitter account. <laughs> They're not going to let Terry do too many interviews, are they? Because she'd get tongue tied, wouldn't she? Bless her. Yeah. But Ginger Nuts, if you're watching it, come see me. Oh. Did Steffi Bull send you a Christmas present? <laughs> no, he didn't send me one. I was going to go put a shit parcel through his door, but that would be unprofessional, wouldn't it? Oh, you should have sent him a porky mug. I should have sent him a porky mug. But uh, we'll meet, won't we, Steffi, soon? And then it'll be game on. But I want to see Jonas Harper too. I think it's a great fight. I uh, thought Jonas won first one by two clear round. You could make a case for free, but if you wanted to do it fairly, I had it. By two rounds. Callum Johnson. He seems to be for the, the forgotten man, doesn't he? Why can't we have him against Boatsy? Because he's too dangerous. <laughs> That's why. He's too dangerous for Boatsy. He's I think he's too good for his own good, if you know what I mean. Yeah. He's uh he's a guy that you just I'd like to see him against someone like Joe Smith Jr. That would be a good fight. Yeah, but a domestic fight would get the juices flowing. Look, Callum smith Bowatsi isn't a pay-per-view, so we'll get that straight now, but it's a headline on a non-pay-per-view show, and it's also... Easily, easily. It's easily a chief support on a pay-per-view. We agree on that, don't we, Rico? Yeah, easily. I mean, it's a great it's a great fight, but I think it's there's too much rest for Bowatsi, and there's too much rest for Matrim, because if Callum Smith blasts Bowatsi, which... I could see happening. I could see the happening. If he beats uh, Buatzi, then what happens to, you know, it's the next generation of who have basically flopped the butt. So you look at Okoli, Buatzi, these guys turn pro the same time with Shakur Stevenson. And look at where Shakur Stevenson is and you look at where these guys are. Even, I mean, I know Yard lost last week or a few weekends ago, but if you look at Anthony Yard's career versus Buatzi's career, Yard has hits higher height, so he's fought at a higher level. Watts has been pro for four years now, mm. over four years, and what's his best win? Yeah. So, Callum Johnson, Boatsy, we agree that that's a chief support pay-per-view, yeah? 
Yeah, but you know, I'd like to see, you know, I'd like to see, I think Callum Johnson deserves to have a shot against another world champion or, you know, close to there or thereabouts because, you know, he he gave better be the hardest fight. The guy that's the best fighter in the division, one of the best punches in all boxing, gave him a hell of a fight. So normally, if you were one of Eddie's favourites and, you know, you were in IFL all the time, people will be pushing for you to get that another world title shot. And I think he deserves that world title shot. He's not the youngest of guys. So I think they should give him a good payday. And I, hopefully Joe can find a way to make the thumb, whether that's for Matchroom or somebody else. So, so that's the chief support pay-per-view. Harper Jonas rematch, that's chief support pay-per-view. Do you agree? Yeah, or well, I'd, well, I'd have that as a headline on its own. On a headline on a non-pay-per-view. Yeah, why not? It's good yeah. fight, the first fight. So it's better than most of the trash that they're serving us with Katie Taylor. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to talk about Katie Taylor because they're just feeding the dustbin men, aren't they? Uh, Savannah Marshall, Chantel Cameron. Where do they fit in in all this? They're both world champions. They seem to don't get a mention, do they? Yeah, I think with Savannah Marshall, uh, there's only one fight for her, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, the dogs are making noise, Christ. Uh, Chantel Cameron, I mean, they should just make the Katie Taylor fight. I don't want to see Katie Taylor fighting against a woman from South America that I've never heard of that turns up out of shape and battering her for 12 rounds and then Adam Smith telling us they would scintillating stuff. Sizzling. Adam's, Adam Smith's... Not known as Bean no more, is known as Roy Cropper. Now we can't do that to Roy, can we? Yeah. Now we'll this just is your it. this is your boxing day roast beef with Porky. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll just manager. we'll just keep him as Bean, Beanie, and your laptop. Him, we're on to you. Do you reckon yeah. the Bean Masons will follow him on to darts? Yeah, Bean Mason. I wonder what the, all the dart players think about Bean sniffing around there for a few quid and trying to trying to still stay involved in the Sky family. If Bean's gone over to Darts, he knows that there's something going down and he's protecting his own interests, isn't he? Like I said, we, I do know a few little things about Bean. and Bean looks after number one. And they all will when it comes down to it. Well, look at them all. Yeah. But, uh, all right, they're moving on. So, Callum Johnson, Boatsy, Callum Johnson, Yard. Uh, and the other one, Jonas Arpa, they're all chief support pay-per-views or headline non-pay-per-views. What about Beefy Smith against Chris Eubank Jr. at 160? Is that a pay-per-view, yes or no? I think anything with Chris Eubank Jr.'s pay-per-view draws in numbers. Yeah. I mean, I've seen him, I have saw him fight against Groves and Manchester and against De Gale on a PBC card, so... You know, I'd, I'd like to see the fight. It's a good fight. They had um, some good spars, I've been told. Yeah, I, you know what? The thing about Eubank Jr. is that he's intriguing. Like, he's one of those fighters that you want to see every single one of his fights because you don't know where you're going to get. And he also talks up a good game. And he's not always on every channel talking about stuff. And now that he's training with Roy Jones, you want to see improvement. He's one of those guys that, he hasn't overdone it with interviews, so it means that you're actually interested in seeing him beef it, Smith. Yeah. Um, you know, you'd like to see what, you know, where he's at at the moment. And after that fight, you know, he could always, whatever happens, he could always drop down and fight against Kell Brook in a big domestic fight. I don't think there's no left to Kell Brook. If Beefy Smith got hold of him, mate, I, I think it'd be a bloodbath. I do want to see it out. I agree, but... It'd out tough Kell Brook it. I even think at the peaks, it's probably you'd make Beefy Smith just a shade favourite if it were a one five four. Even at the peak, even Kelvin O damage, I just think that Beefy just hangs in there. We saw that in that Liam Williams fight, didn't we? Tough, tough kid. But uh, I don't, I don't know. I just don't. I don't think they're getting the kudos. Do you know what I mean? Hey, do you know what we forgot? Fight of the year from England. You know what? I will go with Denzel Bentley against Heffron 1. I'm going to go with Cheeseman Eggington. That was good. Egg and cheese. But getting back to Joe Gallagher's stable, 
I think they've been wronged by cut cut. I think maybe because they're in the north of England, they're not down south. They're not in every interview. You don't see a big clamour from the so-called YouTube experts to get them on their channel. It's the same old people that are overdoing it all the time. You know, when you keep overdoing it, that's where people turn off. Dave Caldwell, weekly interview, weekly interview IFL, talking about boxing. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was doing one today. Caldwell on a Sunday morning talking about the night's action and why a certain fighter lost. Dave, do me a favour, fuck off, little prick. But uh, feather in their own nests. Well, we know about Caldwell, don't we? Tapping up Chisora and Dylan White. This is what these people do, isn't it? It's a ruthless sport. They come with a smile and then behind your back, stick it knife in. Dave Caldwell, come see me. Uh, let's have a look what else we've got on the agenda. Dylan White, Povetkin, did we speak about that? Who is he going to fight next? Could be Joshua. He's calling out Wilder and Ortiz now, isn't he? Luis Ortiz is yeah, but he's been calling out Wilder for years. I mean, why would Wilder fight against Dillian White? Yeah, but he, he's, he's like the kid that cried wolf, Dillian White, and he keeps calling everybody. I'm that anybody who wants it can get it. And then he fights Malcolm Tan, Lucas Brown, Marius Vack and gets iced by Povetkin, all 40-odd-year-old men. And now he's you know going about he, Luis you know Ortiz. You know what he reminds me of? Do you remember when Mayweather did that poll where he asked, who do you want me to fight against next? Amir Khan, Kareem Mayfield, Andre Burton, and there was somebody else, and everybody went to uh, Amir Khan, and Amir Khan was telling everybody, vote for Amir Khan, and uh, Amir Khan won the poll, and then he fought against Berto. I know, yes, yeah, so he's just... Yeah, that's, what, that's what he is. That's what, that's what Dillian White's all about. It's like, yeah. who do you want me to fight against next? And then he'll end up fighting against Marius Wack again or somebody like that. Dillian White reminds me of this guy I know. I'm not going to say his name on here because he's a dick. And if you're watching, and I know you are, you're a dick. This guy I know, every time I see him, he's like, yeah, 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 I, I'm, I'm getting a new Beamer. I says, oh, yeah. And then you see him in a 58 plate, you know, 12 year old. So I yeah. thought you were getting a new one. He's like, you know what? I didn't fancy it. I prefer this one. You know, full of shit. Anybody who wants it can't get it. Dillian, the can't man, white. Why can't he fight against Hugh Fury? Hugh Fury would give Dylan White nightmares, and he has done in sparring, mate. They've sparred. Because he's not going to want it, is he? I mean, he were calling Huey a crackhead three years ago. And well, the... why not fight against him? I know, yeah. I think were... that would be a good fight. I said, Yui, Dillian White's called you a crackhead. <laughs> Yui don't usually say much, but he weren't happy like. <laughs> right. I said, seen this, Yui? <laughs> you know what I'm like, don't you? <laughs> you know, Yui sat on edge of the ring, taking bandages off. Hey, Yui, have you seen this? Dylan White says you're a crackhead. I thought, oops, put my foot in it there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, he didn't want to fight Yui Fury. Yui, Yui had just school him, money. He'd play about with him for 12 rounds. It'd be a school him, wouldn't it? Yeah, Dillian's all wild school boxer. So Let me just I say something he's... here, right? I'm going to say something here, and this is how I look at it, right? You know MMA fight, fighters, right? And Crawford Ashley, this is something Crawford touched on. They kick each other, don't they, a couple of times. They elbow each other a couple of that, a times. It's a man who can endure the most pain who wins, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Boxing isn't like that, is it? It's called the sweet science, isn't it? You come in, do your work, and you get out of the way. Not everybody likes the sweet science. I like to see a tear-up, Gatti, Ward, Frotch, Kesler, them sort of fights. But it's about being getting hit and not... It's about hitting and not getting hit, isn't it? Now, Yui Fury's never been down in his career, has he? So he's got a good yeah. chin, but he doesn't get nailed that much, does he? Tyson's been down four or five times, hasn't he? So his yeah. chin is not as good as Yui's, but he's got heart as well, hasn't he? Well, Yui's got heart as well. But Yui's 26, he's not the finished project yet. Tyson was 27 and a half when he won world title, I'm Vladimir. So I think we can't judge Yui for another two years, mate. Let's judge him when he's 28. Let's see where we're at then. Do you agree? I mean, look, we, we can judge fighters based on what they show us. And I think Hughes showed us that in previous years that he's there or thereabouts, world level. You know, the Parker fight, which he, I think he won. Uh, so he could have been a world champion at that point. But 
you need to give credit to guys that don't take easy, don't take the easiest route because mm. I think Peter Fury's talked a lot about this. You know, fighters win and lose. It's not what he Fury's career. He hasn't been about protecting the. Oh, they've taken tough fights, whether that's Pulev in Bulgaria, which the can't man didn't want, uh, whether that's Parker uh, for no money, whether that's you know he's taken a lot of tough fights and you need to give credit for that. And I've got this theory that. If Muhammad Ali was fighting today, everybody would say that he's a boring fighter, he's not entertaining. I'm not saying that he fears Ali like Mick Hennessy. I'm just saying not every heavyweight style needs to be knockout punches like Wild. And even if you think about Tyson Fury, if you remove the hyperbole and you remove all the stuff that he says, is he an entertaining fighter or is he more similar to Hugh Fury? He's not. He's like a better version of you, isn't he? Yeah, and also Not he well version. he does some things worse, which is he holds a lot, he grabs a hold a lot, he makes fights very ugly, and that's his style. Well, if you remove that Wilder performance, what's his most entertaining performance of his career Steve, against a decent opponent? Steve Cunningham. Yeah. Cools away. Yeah, and that's because Peter wasn't in the corner. He wouldn't have boxed like that if Peter was in the corner. No, but they got the win, so that were the main thing. While Peter were locked up, well, I flying back, I caught them, didn't they? On train, getting going yeah. to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whose idea that one? I'll have to ask him, Peter. Whose idea with that? Let's go through Canada into America. <laughs> uh, all right, then we'll finish off on Chisora. What next for him? And um, has he got a world, another world title run in him? No, I mean, he hasn't had a world title run for years. I think he'll probably end up fighting against White if White doesn't fight against Joshua because where else does he go? They might make another Parker fight or something like that. I just, the thing which is always he should be there for Cannon for the for the younger heavyweights, but you know you wouldn't want to put him in against Fabio Wardley. He's probably a bit too experienced for that at the moment. But you know who do you put him in with? That Chinese guy? I don't know. No, he's useless, him, the big Chinese guy. He is, he is. He's just a big guy. But that's the thing. You, there's not much use for him unless you put him in as an opponent because he'd be a perfect guy for someone like Joe Joyce in next fight. Yeah. But Frank, obviously, won't work with Chisora anymore. All right, then. Well, we'll finish off on Dennis's show because people are saying, Porky, you bottled it talking about Dennis's show. Never bottled note in my life, you gimps. Right, what did you watch it? No, I didn't watch it. I oh, you didn't watch it. Oh, uh, Tommy Frank lost. Yes, I saw that. Uh, people who are, who are, who are close to me said, Do you feel vindicated about that? So, no, because Tommy's an half all right kid, but boxing's about levels, isn't it? Right, and I just think that. What it three or four opponent changes from, and it's. I just thought it were all handled a bit crap, and the kid must have not known whether he were coming or going. You know, we who we were fighting and things like that. It were Flores, and then it got put back because of the pandemic. Then it were some guy whose name I've even forgot. Then it were so, Harvey Horn. Harvey Horn, Mark Tibbs's kid. Yeah, they couldn't get it over at line. Uh, Sonny Edwards' name were thrown about, and then they've ended up with this this guy who's beat Tommy. Uh, I don't know where it's not only Glenn and Tommy know about why the fight stopped. You know, they can spin it how they want to spin it, but does he come back from that? I mean, we're talking about a guy here, Tommy, 13 and 1, in it, but he's not got a stoppage and he's a flyweight. Is that a headline guy on TV? No stoppage and is a flyweight, yes or no? Probably not on paper, no. But look, Dennis is stable. I can't really think of they've got that Kane Sullivan's a good kid. Um, yeah, but would you put him in a rematch with Sufi Ahmed? Would you rematch them again after that war they've just had and they're only five and oh before that fight? Eight, no, five and oh each, no. would you put them in another war? No. So, where, where does Dennis cash alley? He just fought a guy who David Adelaide fought in his third fight, and that was Cash's nineteenth fight. So I think I think Cash is the guy that you probably want to headline. But for Cash, yeah. you probably wouldn't put him in with someone that's about 
you know, English level heavyweights. Dennis, um, I know you're watching. You've got to roll the dice on Cash Alley now. We can't put him in any more stinkers like that, Dennis. It's shocking, man. That were a shocker, wasn't it? You must have seen five. Yeah, but it was a last minute. It was. I mean, look, it was a last minute. Yeah, yeah, but it, we can keep hearing him. about all this last minute stuff, and it, we're going around in circles with it, aren't we? Cash has been with Dennis a few years now. He I went think to, Nick, Nick Webb. Nick Webb will be a good opponent for Yeah, him. Nick Webb. Nick Webb and Cash is a good fight. But Cash went there as, a, as a, he had an area belt, but he's not built on that, has he? It's, I I look at, you know, you know how I work things. I say, is that progress or is that progress? We look at numbers, don't we? In boxing, you look at fights. Has Cash Alley progressed since he's been with Dennis? Yes or no? No. Do we agree on that? No. Right. So who's, who's at fault? Is it Cash Alley? Is it Richard Towers? Is it Dennis? Is it the matchmaker? Who's at fault? Somebody's at fault, and it's not me. So when did when did Cash when did Cash sign with Dennis? A couple of years ago, I think he's had three fights with Dennis now and three wins. But the, it's mediocre stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, look, we've we've. I think we need to be fair and say that we've had the pandemic, which has probably yeah, meant that. We, we haven't been able to make all the fights. I want to see him in a fight. I want to see him in with Babic. Or... They're, they're going to have to roll dice and put him on another show. They can't I think keep... Nathan Gorman would be another good fight. No, it would be too much for Cash at this stage of his career, I think. Too much. I don't know. I, you know, Cash should have probably beaten David Price on this. Made a silly mistake. They've got to so. roll the dice, aren't they? They've got to roll the dice. He's got to be in a title fight next. Can't keep doing this. It's like dragging it on and dragging it on. So who's he left? With? Who, who's in the stable now, apart from Cash? Then who, who, who can carry, it, can move it forward? Well, there's no names at the moment, and that's obviously a challenge. But the only way you really get names is by investing in actually guaranteeing purses and. You know, not doing ticket deals. Josh Wales a ma- got his manager's license and his deal with Dennis is up in April, first week, a couple of weeks in well, April. Josh Wales is Josh Wales is probably the guy and unless they can't if they can't get on a deal, then that's the challenge. But Josh Wales is the biggest name, and then you've got Cash Alley and the rest of his prospects. Yeah, well, where where does that leave Tommy? Did they bring Tommy back, a flyweight who don't stop people? It always that yeah, I mean, look, that. you probably you probably have to bring Tommy back. I mean, flyweights are it's all deep division. Um, you might get him up a division. You might figure yeah. something else out. Yeah, know, but but Tommy, you don't just discard a fight after losing one fight, and he was injured in that fight as well, wasn't he? Is Dennis? Has he got one foot out of boxing or, or, or is he just going to conjure something up or is he just living on past fights from 15, 10, 15 years ago? I, I don't know. What what do you think? Where does he go from here now? Does he bail out and then come back when landscape changes or do they keep throwing money at the job? I, you know what? I think it's a good time to be in Dennis's position in boxing because if the sky and the zone thing, you know, whatever happens there, yeah. Frank Warren and BT, there's probably going to be some changes there. So trips are going to fall and there's probably going to be a lot more fighters that are going to be available. And with this pandemic, as there aren't as many fights, it wouldn't be inconceivable to see Dennis putting money up and having someone like a Callum Johnson to show away against somebody decent, you know, somebody of that level who's a good fighter. I mean, Dennis can try and build his own stable, but also he can try and Win purse birds, he can try and do other things as well. And I think purse birds are going to be a good way for him to actually put on good headliners. Yeah, it's. Uh... But at the moment, look, winning purse birds is tricky because how are you going to make the revenue off those fights? There you go. If it's you don't have a team hard, platform, it? that's going to. Yeah. It's in a tight spot, Dennis. I think he should walk, basically. I think he should walk and come back when landscape changes because it was painful to watch that show. I, 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 I felt it was painful to watch for me. I've... Yeah, but you're too close to it, Porky, aren't you? Yeah, I, I just I was just looking at it and I was like, uh, when they got the £10,000 out in the briefcase and walked off at end and handed it to Kane Salvin, look, we all know what that was, don't we? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But uh, I just thought, oh... God, what's he done now? You know, 
Uh, just... But look, you've got to you've got to do this stuff to get a bit of buzz. Look at MTK and others. I mean, Dennis is competing with the likes of uh, you know the small hall promoters, and he's still putting on shows. You've got to yeah, credit to that. Credit. You don't have you don't have other small hall promoters uh, putting on race shows, do you? No. And when will the next show be for them? Because it was February, then well, it's December this one, so they've had a ten month. Is it going to be another ten month, or are they going to put one on in April? It, it really depends on the pandemic, doesn't it? Because it depends on whether you can have crowds. So if you can have those thousand people there, and then you can figure another way of doing it, then that might be an option. But I think everybody's really waiting for government advice and crowds being back, and the chopping and changing of tiers and everything else just doesn't help, does it? Yeah, it, yeah. It was sad to see, but we have to give him credit for putting the show on and rolling the dice. But I think he's got to roll the dice now with Cash Alley. He's got to be in a fight now. He can't be no yeah, more. I mean, look, Cash Alley could be in the, you know, he could be in, in the other corner. That wouldn't be a bad idea, I don't think. Yeah, uh, why not put him on a matchroom show against the, the, the bound to be... Wardley, Fabian Wardley might be a good fight. They would have had offers from matchroom's matchmaker to go on. Why they haven't took them, I don't know, probably because they don't want a bit B-side. Uh, not maybe that. I mean, look, Matchroom like to give a little notice as possible, don't they? So, you know, you just probably have to be ready and just accept that you're going to take an offer at some point next year, but it's just going to be hard to run a training camp so that you're going to peak at the right time because you can't be in the gym constantly sort of ready and then three weeks later you have a fight and then you need to organise sparring and everything else so mm. you know you might be want to be pushing against somebody like Fabio Mordley and try and get a fight against him for a card in a, on a certain date Yeah I think that Cash could beat Fabio Wardley. I mean Richard Towers gets him in fantastic shape and it's just a case of putting it all together on night but I think he could beat Wardley. but I think that's a good fight I think that's a great fight. And, you think, know, Wardley's yeah. getting a bit of buzz as well, so why not? What about the White Rhino against Cash Alley? Because we know the White Rhino is going to come back, don't we? I don't know. I mean, based on what he's saying on Instagram constantly about how he was never in shape and how he never trained and everything else, which is a bit... Uh, it's always a bit sad to see that boxers have been lying throughout their careers to the fans. And, you know, saying that before that Nick Webb fight, he was having... Harry Bows and everything else, and you know, I don't want to see fighters coming out saying, "No, oh, I didn't train anyway when I was fighting. I didn't train, and now look at me. I'm working in media, and all you idiots are following me. But I've been blind to you all this time. That's what I have a problem with. Just like you, yeah, agreed, agreed. It's not, you know, this is the show, right? This is uh, all a part of the drama series, and now we're looking at the script after their career. They're revealing that it was all a script, and. Kel Brook, another one who said he didn't train correctly and he cheated all the way through and parted and all that. They're all coming out, in it? All yeah, but letting the fans down, a lot of them. The problem with boxing is why if that happens in football and your team loses, but in boxing we've always been asked to shell money out of our own pockets for somebody that's in great shape and then we realised that we were cheated by the athlete that they couldn't even do what was expected of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. Well, that's about it, Rico. We've had an hour and uh, 15. Seven, hour and 15 minutes. So I hope you're well. Good, thanks. Uh, so what's on the menu for today for Porky? Are you going to have uh, a go for... I've got, uh, I've got a watch over there that I've had ages. It cost me a fortune. I don't wear it no more. I'm going to take it to my dad's and it just needs altering. So Because obviously... When I was 28 stone, I had a big old fat wrist on me, but now it's hanging down here on me. So, and I'm going to get that altered, take my kids down there, and go, go, go see me, go see uh, my dad and my mum, and uh, plod on. And yeah. just basically, that's it. And uh, probably come home when I might uh, upload this today for all Porky fans. Porky can we call it, can we call it uh, Boxing Day Roast Beef? But po, 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 boxing day roast beef. Now, yeah, we could call it that or in raw beef. Boxing raw beef. Day raw beef. Yeah, Box, <laughs> raw beef. Or something like leftover, that. leftover boxing day raw beef. Raw gammon. Raw gammon. <laughs> <laughs> raw gammon on a slice of bread with a bit of uh, HB sauce. Yeah, raw gammon. Yeah. Something like that. I'll think of something. Don't worry. 
And what are you doing for New Year's Eve? Any plans? Uh, well, obviously, over the years, I'm usually doing porridge on on New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I'm going to try and stay in and not go get invited. I've been invited to a couple of parties, but I think they're in bad taste, aren't they, with the pandemic, aren't they? So I'm not yeah. going to go. Probably going to stay in, sadly. And just watch a bit of telly or something and just preparing for next year because there's a lot on for next year. Obviously, you've seen the video we did at Mickey Theo's gym, didn't you, in, in yeah. Essex? There's, gonna, there's things like that lined up. We, we uh, a production company, to do quite a few things like that. That's cool. Yeah. Let fighters call people out or managers air the grievances. And we're going to get it on film and then put it out there. You should do another one with Crawford Ashley, go down to his gym. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I've just texted him this morning, actually, Crawford. Yeah, I like Crawford, actually. Uh, only thing is, when I go to visit Crawford, it, where he lives, it's uh, back at Kev's other factory, you know, where, where the... Yeah. Where they package all Coca Cola stuff and that, and I, so I'm, I do go down that end. And when I go though, I leave his house and I'm driving home with music blaring. Who's gonna have a fucking whitey? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! I had to pull up one day. All ghost bumps were coming up on me. I was like, oh, yeah, man, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. But I like Crawford, actually. He's all right. And I like, big shout out to Nick Manners from Leeds. I forgot what your yeah. gym's called, Nick, but he's doing good things in community. I like that, them Leeds lads over there. They're all right. They're proper, they're not, they're not arse slickers. And they just say it as it is. And they're, they're my kind of people, if you know what I mean. Does that sound right? Yeah. They just say it as it is, Nick Manners. They all get a hardcore badge. That's yeah, what we should do. Like, anybody, hardcore. anybody that's a porky, yeah. Uh, Porky fan or porky type of person should wear a little hardcore badge so then we can recognize each other on the street. I'll have to, it's like, a, it's like a poppy, a little porky badge. Yeah, I'll get, I'll go, Kevin, if you're watching this and I know you are, let's get uh, Cam to arrange some porky hardcore badges. We'll get them, we'll get them <laughs> porky followers. Eh? So, other than that, I'm all right. Uh, listen, this is how I look at it, Rico, right? No matter what anybody says to me, I'm a winner in life because when you can go through what I've been through and do this, doing something you love and surrounded by people that you trust, I I'm blessed, mate. To be doing this, I sound like a Spencer Fearing, don't I? But I'm blessed. And I was talking to Peter Fury about this the other day, and he felt the same that we've been in in an area where, in a place, sorry, where there's a dark cloud over us, aren't we, Richard Towers? He's. Mm -hmm. So to come out that, oh, that's relentless. That's overcoming adversity. Eddie Hearn's not overcome any adversity, has he? I knew you were going to bring this back to Eddie Hearn. <laughs> I had to do it because he's in our faces every day. It's like with football, isn't it? With Liverpool. They're on every video on YouTube now, aren't they? On every interview. It's because the top... You know one. who we haven't mentioned today? Who? The missing man, your favourite. The missing man. Tony Bellew, how are you doing? The disappearing man. Who, who, who reappeared very quickly. Yeah, I, I ain't got no time for Tony Bell. We know that. But we have to respect his genius. We have to respect him for the simple reason that he's never beat a champion and he's ended up with four pay-per-views, a millionaire, and he's on Sky and he's in our faces every day. He's on every TV show. But he told us he wanted to disappear. So we have to give yeah. him respect. But if he can put his head down, Rico, on the pillar at night like that, knowing... That he never took a belt off a champion. I'm all right with that. And he, he can be all right with that. But we both know in his dark moments, when he's around men that have beat champions, he feels inferior. Because I've heard back. You know what I mean? So, Tony, come see me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Happy New Year to happy all. Happy New Year, uh, you go. Yeah, it's been a great one. All, all the fans of Porky's channel and make sure you subscribe. Um, yeah. Yeah, have a good Boxing Day and have a good Christmas break. Right, and shout out to all them people that keep constantly sending text messages and emails. Thank you very much. And uh, all right. keep the questions coming, even the horrible ones. Keep them coming because I love a good laugh on the morning. All right, Enrico, peace out. Beat it in. Bye. Bye. Well, that one, Rico, aka in Finland in a cold country. About to pop over and see him, then I may bus pass. So I think that's about it, really. If anybody's offended by anything we've said in this video, I don't care. And I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Boxing Day. I'll get this out this afternoon. What time is it now?
it's only morning yet. We'll get this out this afternoon. I'm going to get a shower and then I've got a bit of running about still, but this is out today. A little treat for you. So I hope you're well. And if anybody knows a good dentist abroad that's not a butcher, um, they do a good job. Send me details, porkycorner at mail.com. No butchers, though. All right. Peace out. Oh, let me just say, Crawford Ashley, the spiritual boxer, YouTube, follow him, is me pal.